Alrighty, Saturday night, heading off to my spooky ancient woodland and uh, didn't think it through, haven't been checking the weather, it's extremely boggy at the moment. Uh, I should have remembered that last year, I don't know if you can see that over there, but that's all water. And because I am bringing the lavu and I'm not going to pitch it with a pole, I really don't feel like doing it with a pole today. I need to find a suitable location under a tree where I can hang the lavu off. And this is a pretty good spot here. I've been walking around. My shoes are absolutely wet. Very bad decisions. Wrong shoes to bring today. So, yeah, my work boots and socks are already wet on the inside. I mean, look at that. So, yeah, hopefully it doesn't get all frosty tonight reasonably mild but this spot makes it more worthwhile just look at that beautiful willow there with all the moss covering it nice open space over here so I doubt we'll have a clear sky tonight I was I mean I've been spending the last 45 minutes looking for a location I went over there to those uh, oaks over there and it was just that's why I got so wet I'm absolutely knackered I was gonna start the video out a different way but, whoa, it's just not possible. Um, this is a very, very spooky part of the woodland. Uh, I remember the first time I camped in here, I actually arrived here well after dark. And uh, I camped somewhere around, around here through there. And obviously, like, it was this time of year. So, you know, the sky was open like this. Look how open this place is. I remember coming through here and I spooked something. I don't know what, and I thought there was a rough sleeper in here. Because I had to look for wood. And I heard something down here, down this way, between these two trees here, just like whoosh, running off to that side. You know, it could have been a fox, could have been a mutt jack deer, who knows. Um, doubt it was someone, because it's so dense in there that it would have just been a huge, huge mission for them to get away from you or whatever. So, anyway, uh, the lover is sitting, my bike's chilling over there somewhere next to the fence. So I had to jump over a barbed wire fence kind of thing, and the lover is that is attached to the pannier of the bike, so heading over to pick that up and then I'll see you in a second after the setup, I guess. Winter, winter solstice tonight. Had a huge mission trying to figure out where to camp tonight. Um, yeah, just packing up was a bit late. Hop that fence over there now, coming back for the bike. Lover is sitting on the back of the bike on the pannier with a whole bunch of things. And I'm over there. That's where I'm going to set up tonight. So we'll see. I don't know. I have no idea what the weather's like. All I know is it's really boggy, really damp. My shoes are absolutely wet already. Through to my socks. Look at my pants. So if it freezes up tonight, I'm going to have a pretty difficult time in the morning. I've decided I'm just going to get the uh, the stick stove going quickly, the Lixada, which I, what is something I call the AK-47 of uh, budget stick stoves. Um, yeah, I'm going to get that going quickly, just get a fire going. Uh, I know I still have sunlight left, or daylight, but I'd rather get the fire going first, and then I don't mind setting up with a fire running. Yeah, I can get some uh, food on. I'm pretty hungry right now. So just quickly getting the spirit burner running quickly the alcohol burner um, I'm just gonna boil a cup of water for my uh, my drink and then dinner tonight is because it's deer steak venison steak marinated in a port based marinade with Worcestershire sauce um, some you know anyway I'll, I'll add the recipe on my blog 
uh, just a bunch of things growing there, a bunch of herbs and stuff, pretty good. Herbs directly from my garden as well, so hopefully it tastes pretty good. That will be dinner, and then tomorrow, if you stay for the whole video, I have a Norwegian Arctic field ration, a single meal ration. Um, that's going to be partially breakfast, so I'm just going to have one big meal, so it'll be a breakfast brunch kind of thing going on. Okay, current situation. Uh, it started raining about 20 minutes ago or so, so I just took the basher out, put that up on the side. I was going to do some kind of lean-to position. Um, this is what I have right now. It, it is kind of lean-to, but anyway, I'll show you in the morning more or less what it really looks like, or put up some pictures that I've taken with the night uh, night shot. Um, bikes over there. There's a lavu. See it's all twinkly right now. Bush is up. I'm gonna have to move the stove from there because that's where the bush is. I have to move it just right behind where I was standing a second ago. Just over here. It'll still slightly be covered over there, but I'm not worried about you know, rain getting on the wood or anything like that while it's burning. If I'm gonna have a fire, it's gonna be hot enough to uh, handle a bit of drizzle, you know. I've already organized my drink. I've changed from tea to coffee. I found a coffee, I found sugar, and I found whitener in my EDC pouch, so I decided to go for that. I think it's well deserved. Getting some pretty nice curls out of this hazel over here. Pretty good. Not too bad. So it's mostly hazel that I've got, and then some leftovers of wood that I carved ages ago. It's only been on a couple of minutes, let's take a look anyway, it's quite hot. There, boiling up eh? Nice. It's probably been marinating for like about 7-8 hours anyway, so it should be good. Warming it up in there. Just frying it up a bit more, you know, because uh, I don't want it soaking wet on the marinade. Still want it juicy. I do like my uh, steaks and stuff just that a little bit more well done than some people. That can come off, and then the coffee pot to go on. What I normally do in this case is I try my best to close up the. Uh, fire reflector, as much heat as possible up there. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. But the 
juice in the bottom there. Seasoned pots. <laughs> if you're wondering about this, this comes with the um, zebra billy cans, which is pretty worth it. You buy a you know, cooking pot thing, and you get this little insert thing. Um, and obviously, if you buy that, uh, where is it? I don't know where it is, but aluminium pot handle. And you basically got a miniature frying pan, you know. Um, good for cooking a small steak or like two small chops. Yeah, warming stuff up is pretty good. All right, so what's the final things to do now? Well, be upset about spilling the uh, rest of the hot chocolate. I mean, there's a little bit left, but it's like, yeah, well, anyway, I put too much water in the hot chocolate, not enough uh, flavoring, so it wasn't very impressive. So, order of the day, I don't know, just sit and think about stuff. Should have brought a book, that's for definite. And got the lantern there, and the socks above it. So, it was really in the toe sections where... Know, where it was a bit wet so hopefully that helps out a bit by tomorrow I mean these are the ones I'm gonna wear for uh, putting the shoes back on but then I got these for sleeping warm wintry thermal fleecy things you know it's not that cold I mean I can see my breath but compared to other nights where my hands were just freezing so um, yeah, there's there's a good few degrees difference going on this time around. Uh, my last wild camp was during the week. I don't know which day it was. I slept under the British Army Basha, and um, that was pretty cold. I mean, I got toasty warm once. I was like kind of settled for like half an hour. I felt good, but um, yeah, until then, man. Even though I had a nice fire going and I was putting my hands by the fire, I was freezing, absolutely freezing. So yeah. Um, getting into those months now and I, I do enjoy it I think this might be the last uh, clip for tonight if it is then catch you in the morning and uh, hope you've enjoyed it so far yeah I do have a Norwegian Arctic field ration that'll be my breakfasty slash lunch thing um, yeah that's what I've got left over for food really I'll show you a photo now of what the contents of the uh, Arctic field ration are. So we'll see if I have enough water to run all of that and the coffee. If not, it'll just be what's in the ration. So, I had a pretty awesome sleep. Um, there's the entrance to my tent and what it looks like. Yep, it's that boggy. Um, I don't know if you can see them, but there's all the sparkles on the end of the tent. So it has been raining like basically every time I, I woke up kind of subconscious consciously. It was raining all night long. I don't know when it stopped. It's now a few minutes to nine. I set alarms for something past seven. And yeah, it literally has been raining all, all, all night long. Um, it's possible that it stopped and then what I've been hearing is just the water drops coming off the trees. Don't know what time it was, but I think when my alarms went off it, just I think I woke up and then I had a look at the time and it was like six something and I knew okay, my alarms were at seven or whatever. So I went back to sleep everything hanging there and there is finally one 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 little drippy thing <clears throat> and I only notice now after I switch the light on so that over there somehow from the top of the tent it's come down so it's still 
I say the lover is the best thing in terms of rain because hearing that all night long I honestly thought that I'd wake up and find at least some of my gear wet somehow and looking around the tent oh, there's just nothing whatsoever I think I woke up within half an hour of going to bed and um, basically I had to kick my socks off um, I had to unzip the arctic sleeping bag wherever I zipped it down to um, about halfway down and I slept really cool after that in times I just had only the bivy over my top area this is the only birch that I've been able to find in this entire wood slash scrub the only one <laughs> um, when you when you're into birch uh, sorry when you're into bushcraft you want to learn about the different trees birch is obviously a big one if you've done your studying about bushcraft on YouTube and I guess in other I mean other formats as well books etc you will uh, in temperate climates this is one of the trees that you will uh, rely on um, I'm glad to say it's the you know I don't really know all the different type of species of birch but what I can confirm is that this is the one I can see from a very long distance that um, this is the one where the the ends of the the branch tips weep down and the good thing about that is this time of year they drop them all so here we have now I know it's saturated I know it's wet but this is dead and had I seen this last night had I realized that this I know about this tree from ages ago had I seen this last night I could have actually bundled a lot of this up and put it around the fire to dry it off so that I have something to start the fire with today when I discovered this uh, this birch the exact same thing happened I came up to check it out and it was the same time of year where uh, this uh, dead elder below it had auricular fungus growing on it this stuff is very very thick it's been absorbing the water heavily look at that yeah there's a lot in there quite a bit actually so I might do a harvest today and for definite I didn't see, obviously I didn't see that last night there's camp over there so there's a lot of this birch stuff might not be appearing on camera but there's lots of it so that's cool At this stage I don't really care if my socks or feet get any more wet than what they are because um, it's not cold really so it's just uh, an annoying dampness you get you know that's all oh yeah when you tread on moss like this I don't care if you care about leave no trace or not maybe you should just respect nature step slowly and cautiously because it will slip off if you just jump off of a log so I'm hanging on to some branches and I'm stepping really carefully it's about not just leave no trace but also respect for nature there we have it no damage wow I think I'm gonna walk away with a pretty good harvest today there's some on the ground I'll leave that stuff never realized there was a crab apple tree here I know of some further down that way so if I plan it right I could have a uh, bushcraft jam or something <laughs> what, what you have to research when it comes to mycology that's that's mushroomology <laughs> in other terms um, what you have to learn is what is it that this mushroom is consuming inside this tree you know is it the core um, I forgot all the other words, Seph, Sephidin, Seph something because um, each type of fungi consumes a different part of the tree some go for the core, some go for the outer um, and obviously once that's consumed then the fungi just disappears this elder has clearly been dead for 
quite a period of time. It's a nice one up there, nice one up there. Because I mean, there's no bark around it whatsoever. So, and I've seen dead branches sitting on small little branch with the fungi growing on it. And uh, so it must be just consuming all the wood maybe. Seek and ye shall find. So, if this is cramp or fungus, I've never seen it looking grey like this. I've always seen it when it's black. So what I'll do is I'll grab a few anyway. Here's turkey tail, they're quite old. Turkey tail can use, be used medicinally. Uh, when people are recovering, when people have gone for cancer treatment and recovering from, or whilst they're doing the chemotherapy, I think. Turkey tail is one of the things that you should really, really look into if you know anybody's in that situation. Um, extremely beneficial. Uh, obviously way, way, way more beneficial than any pharmaceuticals that your loved one will have been put on. They've been in my pocket for a bit and now the dust is coming off. So it's definitely cramp ball. What an amazing backdrop, eh? Let's take a quick look at the setup. Obviously the lavu held on with suspension. Give you more room in the inside. So that's the British Army bivy. It's encasing my Arctic sleeping bag, which is inside. It's a new purchase. This is probably like the third or maybe fourth camp that I'm using it. I was really warm last night. I'm hanging the lantern up from the center and then I like to hang things above me that I need quick access to so my head torches there. A uh, bit of paracord that I just thought I'd get out of the way. Um, then it's the usual setup in the lavu. I've got some kind of ground sheet. This is just a very, very cheap one that I folded over twice. I folded over twice because it's so boggy in here and that meant that I didn't have very good stretching room so I've thrown my rucksack at the back there and so that my bivy wouldn't get full of mud so maybe my rucksack has a bit of mud on the bottom of it now who knows um, yeah then your what I call the surfboard I've taken a five millimeter roll mat again like a normal camping section of a large superstore like a Tesco or something and with a silver line and I've cut it in the shape of a surfboard or a skimboard because it works better in a uh, works much better in a hammock that in that shape it still bends in the sides but just you know doesn't fling out one side and then that's the uh, base S self inflating I think it's made by uh, Highlander it's a Highlander yeah super thick very dense high quality and solid solid piece of kit and then this time around I've taken my so I've got the C2 Summit Eros self uh, inflating pillow inflatable to stop it sliding around because what I used to do I used to put it inside the hood of my uh, my sleeping bag but it's super annoying because when you turn sideways it turns sideways and it's like vertical so you know, just what I do now is I throw it there. I've taken my jacket and I've wrapped my jacket around in all three areas. So the hood has gone over there, the side and the sleeve, side and sleeve, and that keeps this pillow in one position. It doesn't slide around underneath you. If you want, you can try and hook that underneath the pillow as well and tighten it up. And yeah, all night long, no matter what position I changed, the stayed where it was. So that used to keep me awake a lot like a subconscious level of keeping you slightly awake so you 
you may not have gotten the rest you wanted. So, top tip, you learned it here on this channel. <laughs> yeah, and that's more or less that. Shamag just for whatever, and then mostly my cooking stuff and camera and whatever stuff, you know. Yeah. Alright, so we've got sunset down that way. I'm busy packing up. My battery's just about to run out, so I won't be able to film anything other than this little segment over here. That's a lover over there just hanging up to drip a bit. Basho is sitting over there, been drip drying on my bike for a little while now. Had a very nice walk around, picked up a whole bunch of fungi. There's one bag of harvest over there. The other one's over here, pretty full. It's a good couple of kilos of uh, auricularia fungi that I got, it's pretty awesome.